Attention. Four unauthorized devices found on your network. Wait. Now launching denial of service attack across network wide devices. Am I able to watch? Dang, this don't load. What about over here? Is over here low? Over here? Over here? Let's load this up. Dang, this don't load either. Hold on. What about block ops still on my TV? This low, right? You bitch. What's going on YouTube? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys something real cool, real ethical. Basically, it's gonna allow you to send a fake ARP request to both the router and the device, sending fake information to both of those. So it's gonna make it so they can't communicate, which is a denial of service attack. And I also made a program, um, it's on my GitHub and it simplifies the attack process and automates it. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description, but until further notice though, I'm gonna show you guys how to perform this attack for yourselves. All right, I almost forgot to mention, y'all probably wondering why I got a laptop in the background playing Block Ops 2. So basically that's gonna be the test dummy of which I'm gonna send the forged packets to. So that way I'm gonna show you guys live how it works and that it does work and how you can do it yourselves too. Just looking for the sports channel, Gary. All right, so first things first, you're gonna wanna go ahead and load up Visual Studio Code or whatever ID that you use to program. And then we're gonna go ahead and import all the libraries that we're gonna need. All right, so I imported the rich library, which you really don't need for this program to work, but I like to import it to make the output cleaner and look better so it's easier to understand. But what we do need is Scalpy. And from here, I imported Ether, which is for layer two. ARP, which is the protocol from layer two to layer three to do the address resolution protocol and also SRP, which allows you to send and receive the packet. Now, in this demonstration, we're only sending the packets. We don't need to receive them, but if you wanted to expand upon it, you could use this. All right, so from here, we're gonna need about five constants or variables, depending on how you wanna refer to them as. So we're gonna need the target IP address along with its MAC address, the router IP and the router's MAC address, and then we're gonna need a fake MAC address to send the information back to. So I'm gonna go ahead and write them down so you guys can see what it looked like. All right, so if you guys don't know the MAC address or the device that you're trying to test this out on, you can go ahead and go to Nmap and type in Nmap and you can put the IP address. And if you don't know the IP, you can still use Nmap by just typing in the default subnet and putting the slash 24, depending on what type of subnet you got to scan all the devices on your network. But after that, you're gonna go ahead and put in Nmap and then you're gonna put in the IP you got. You're gonna go ahead and tap enter. And just like that, we now have the MAC address to the target that I wanna hit. All right, also, if you guys don't know the information for your router, just go through that same process to get the IP and the MAC address for it. Once you do, plug it into some constants right here and plug the target info inside some variables over here just to make it easier for you to know the difference because this next step might get a little complicated, I'm not gonna lie. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and create the packet for the router and we're also gonna create the packet for the node that we're sending it to. Now, you may think it's gonna be a little complicated or hard or difficult, but to be honest, once you get the hang of it, it's kind of simple. And once you understand the, the basics of layer two and layer three, it makes it even easier. So I'm gonna go and show you guys what it looked like and how we do it. All right, so I went ahead and made a packet for the router and a packet for the target IP. Now you could pause this right here and try to understand it and do the same for yourself, but all the variables are the exact same for you. Just place the variables how you want it, target info up here and the router info right here. And we're basically sending an ARP request to both the target and the router and we're mapping the IP to a fake MAC address. So that way when either one of those try to reach each other, they can't because of the fact that their ARP table has a fake MAC address that doesn't allow them to communicate with each other, effectively making a denial of service. All right, so now that we got the hard part out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and create the logic that's gonna allow us to send the packets to each device. So we're gonna go ahead and wanna create a variable to hold the amount of packets sent, sent equals zero. And then we're gonna do while sent is less than 1000, SRP, which is send receive packets, like I said earlier, we're going to send a packet for the router and we're also going to send the packet for the node. And then we're going to add a time sleep command in here to slow it down a bit. And we're going to do 0.5. All right, at the import time, real quick. And now the program is now made. All right, so I put the wrong IP in. So I put 138 when it's actually 120. Now let's go ahead and start the attack. We're gonna tap play up here. I'm gonna do this so you guys can see that it actually works. So the attack is starting. So we're gonna go ahead and tap a random video. We're gonna tap this Block Ops 2. 
and watch how it doesn't load. So as you, as you guys can see, this shit is real. So look, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Look, watch what happens as soon as I stop it. Boom. Now the laptop and router can send an ARP request to each other without me getting in the way. It's gonna resolve those ARP requests and it's gonna allow it to load. You see what I'm saying? Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you like this little walkthrough, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, this video is for purely the educational and ethical reasons only. Don't do this unless it's on your own network or you have permission to do it. Now, with that being said, the program that I showed in the beginning of the video, like I said, it's on my GitHub and I'll put a link to that in the description. That program is 3200 lines long. So that's, like I said, a really way more complex advanced version of it. But, um... You guys can check that out if you want to play around with it. Just be careful, be safe, be cautious, and please keep it ethical. Um, I did a 12-hour stream last week on, I think, about the 7th of May of 2025. And I'm going to be doing another one probably next week, a 24-hour stream. So let me know if you guys want to watch that because y'all seem to like the 12-hour stream. But until next time, I'm going to see y'all boys later, though. Peace!